something like a, what goes to the victors? Yeah, spoil it, victory. Uh, Spoils go to the victors. They won. And history is told by the people that usually won yeah, the battle. Because Bill Loud, you know, he basically was the victim of the family. We got to have the family. The family's got to be more responsibility. The family's got to do this. So the guy fooled around. Basically, we got like 60% of the guys in this country are divorced. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my mother and father. Actually, would, that was at a time when they really didn't get divorced, did they? No, they stayed together. I mean, my mother and father were the only members of my family that didn't get divorced. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, my grandmother was married to two, two different Germans, so one German went off to World War, and then he didn't come Never back, so back. she didn't come back, so she married another German. But, um, but still, every member of my family, but my mother and father and me were divorced. I mean, so, but um, uh, he. You know, uh, it, it, you paying attention. The, the 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 beating him down that was supposed to be the high point of the show didn't happen. He basically, you know, uh, okay, no, I guess, you know, I guess I'm leaving. And then um, mm -hmm. that was it. He he never changed character. He was always. I mean, my guess the guy could probably. I mean. I only I ever saw him in person was that he was always the shaking your hand, the putting the arm around, always the smiling salesman. Mm -hmm. But generally, I always, you know, like a, um, my grandmother would say, be better the gentleman that does nothing but smile. Because that guy will slice your throat when you turn it back on him. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing there was a really tough, as Nell's side, even tarder than his wife. Mm -hmm. I did hear, he said, yeah, the guy has to have something going because he stayed with her. You know, no, it just, you have to understand, in this period of time, this is what the women were like. Oh, were they? Oh, this is the, um, the, the time when women, uh, they were basically, you know, well, we're holding the family together. We do all of this, we do all of that. And we don't get the attention that we deserve. Um, so, uh, it's also a period, I remember... Uh, I remember um, Red Fox doing, Red Fox commented about it, and you know, he said, you know, I remember when he said it, he said, you know why um, there are so many divorces in black families? Why? And he said, because of black women like Pat Lau. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I mean, she said, she did, and the thing, the Galafina character, Gilbert, is talking to her when she's actually, when she's talking to us about it, where she's not that type of character, I mean. Yeah. No, she isn't. In fact, I think that the character, I mean, you know, for everything that I've heard, it's like she she does make Pat Loud a likable character. She makes Pat Loud a likable character. An empathetic character. character. And that's what she was talking about. She said, that's what, she said, uh, okay, mm -hmm. she's having a problem. She said, what in the world? She's talking to Thomas Decker. Why do they, uh, you know, what, what, do they, what do they refer to me? He's, you know, he, you know she said, that, you know, I cut, she wants to play like, um, Angelica, uh, and Houston. Angelica, she wants to play a real bitch. That's never going to happen because they call her. She plays. She, she's too empathetic, which means she, she lets everybody push her around. She's a, a even gentle when she's thing. playing a character, she's just a gentle little thing. Has played, you know, yeah. uh, played tough parts, but she just isn't the mm -hmm. type of woman that basically could be Pat Loud. But she well, played like her really well, though. Like you could see, like um. Meryl Streep. Yeah, Meryl Streep would basically, Meryl Streep would have fit into the role too. You mm -hmm. know, uh, or, you know, uh, it would have done a great one. Or, but but see, the, I mean, I understand why they selected Diane Lane, and she did a fabulous job. And it's all got to do, even though it was an HBO production. Part of it has to do with mind. physical appearance. It's a, it's a, you know, because um, Meryl, all the other women would have been too old, whereas oh, she yes. would have been the right age when this thing was being done. Oh. See. So 40 years later, Pat Loud was about the same age as Diane Lane, so they got... Uh, and yeah, that makes sense. You have to understand, they, they, uh, they were also talking about the fact, they were talking, the film editing was brilliant, because there were times, that what they did, they were running archival footage of, the, of, of Decker, Galfini, Robbins, and, and Lane with the characters they were playing. At times, they melded into one yeah. another. They basically nailed the look and everything so perfect. And, and the characterizations. Yeah. The, phys the physical. They, they basically were doing the movements of these people. Everything that you could think of. So, in a sense, it was brilliant performances by the people that mm -hmm. were there. So, they will deserve their Emmys if they yeah. get them. So, but, um, but you learn a lot. I mean, Diane Lane was on for a, a long time. She was on for much of the movie. Before, yeah. You know, it, was, it was her movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Robbins came in and out. 
Decker came in and out, and Galafini came in and out. But this was she was a this was a woman's movie, movie totally. Mm -hmm. It was a woman. If you're a woman, it's what we were. got a woman director. They also had two directors, a male and a female. I'll lay you odds that the woman was always on on Lane's side, and the male was always on the side of the three guys. I bet so. That's why she says she liked working with two because that if she uh, is a balance is a balance, you know, but. Uh, the balance being that the woman was always on her side, and, and the guys had the smaller parts anyway. It is hers. It is hers. Like it, it, Wait, it, in the original one, was it really focused on Pat Loud? And yeah. Then, okay. It was so, Pat Loud. It was all Pat Loud. So it, it's very true to form on that. Yeah, that's why the the more material on Pat Loud, then I mean, and also you know she's playing Loud as a, you know you've got to pay attention to the little things that's going on. Pat Loud condemn people for smoking around her children. She smoked and the children all smoked. Mm -hmm. This minor Except little, for Lance. Uh, Lance. Lance wasn't to smoke. Mm -hmm. But she smoked in front of him. Mm -hmm. So Now and I, here's the part is I'm really intrigued by this, so now I want to go back and see the original yeah. um, movie or series, but I don't know if you can't even buy it, can no, you? No, I don't it's not on D V D, it's not available. They I, said, they said, uh, what is it, I think Thomas Decker said they tried it out once every 10 years. And I remember some guy said he saw it on PBS and he recorded it. At a it. marathon session, they did all the episodes back to back because they take, they bring it out and then they take it off because it is, it is basically, it is a polarizing show. Mm -hmm. Because it is, uh, they referred to it, I mean, basically what they did was they showed at the end, you know, the, the thing, the All-American Family, and it's got the, like the screen is broken, it's shattered. Mm -hmm. Well, now it makes you reflect, you look at this, Cinema Verde, and then now you look at reality TV. Yeah. It's, it's, it's where it all came from. Reality TV, like I said, listen closely, go watch the movie and watch Tim Robbins. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to do something to get people's attention, something like that, you know. And how many, let's see. And remember, he was set there, okay, is this one good? Is this one good? And, he, and you know, like they say, we're not supposed to be talking to us. And he said, they all know you're here. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he's talking to the camera people because he's, you know, what the heck is the difference? They know you're they, here. They know you're here and you're talking to the, like, the audience. That's right, just, just like the audience because the louds were, a, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, they were a performing family. They mm -hmm. were performing. They just didn't realize, okay, they weren't film and TV people. Mm -hmm. They were from another area, you know, uh, and they didn't realize what could be done within the editing room. And they twisted everything. Well, and, you know, somebody has a slogan that's called Living Out Loud. Yeah. Well, it, in a way, it's like their last name was perfect for it, Loud. Yeah. And, it, it, I, mean, I mean, I have no idea what the lady was like mm -hmm. before I saw her. All I know is that nobody liked her after they saw her. And and, and, she and they could, a lot of it could have been because of the publicity and everything surrounding it. Yeah, she could have just gotten more hard. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you watch the character, the character from the day they came in did not like what was being done. But she kept doing it because, you know, the Diane Lane character, because she wanted to get even with her husband. Mm -hmm. It was all about getting even with her husband. She didn't intend to hurt the children because neither one of them wanted to hurt the children. I mean, like, he had, this look, this, you know, the, that uh, Bill Loud had the least to do with Lance of all the children, but guess mm -hmm. who was the favorite child of both husband and wife? Mm -hmm. Was its son, you know, Lance. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, apple of both their eyes. Daddy gave him everything he wanted to give him, made certain that he was treated better than the other kids. Oh, and, yeah, I remember that one part in the movie where they, they were sitting there, stuff. he's like, where are you do why are you doing this? Where did you get the money for this? Where do you think the money comes from? Yeah. You're going to go work in the cement thing, and you're going to go work in such and such. Yeah. And I think Lance took off to Europe. <laughs> Lance took off to Paris, so, you know. But, uh, but everybody did become very, I mean, so-called, it's a shattered family. What a shattered family came out, the typical American family. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it ended up with a happy ending. You know, Lance unfortunately died from AIDS, but... Mm -hmm. He, from that period, like I said, it was from drug use, not more or less, you know, because he was fooling around with uh, drugs he shouldn't have been using, but... Um, you know, it's one of those things, it's like, stuff happens, life happens, and yeah. the rest is how you deal with it. That's right, and mm -hmm. they, Laos basically dealt with it, you know, first of all, uh, I'll lay you odds that if they didn't know it was going to come out the way it came out, that, that, they, that he, she would have done it anyway. 
because it served a point for her. She was making a statement. Yeah, I remember she, when they were sitting there talking about it, and he's like, well, why do we want to do this? And she said, well, would you rather see such and such family on your TV? Yeah, that was it. You want to have them, you know, and they picked them because they know they were they were a dysfunctional family. But God, the family of all the country. Okay, I mean, I, my family, my father was in the entertainment business, my mother was in the restaurant business, my father built houses, my mother helped to run cinema <laughs> chains. But they were never, almost never there at the same time but we we did we went on vacation together we, we did all kinds of things together but that was the type of family the lounge basically where everybody was you know you didn't eat and you didn't sit down at the table and eat everybody was doing you know own your own room you're doing this you're doing that so i mean like half the time I remember when i was young my mother would she'd call up my grandmother said uh, where's your grandson at and he said well he's, he's over here working with john wayne and he said, uh, well, tell, tell your, you know, your grandson that his father is going to come pick him up in a squad car later. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she didn't call me by my name. She went to talk to grandmother, he was your grandson. Or my father, tell your son that he's supposed to be back to do this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, we're a typical dysfunctional California family. They're Cal they're, these guys were rich cats from Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that she's probably more Santa barbara -ish than she was. You know, she'd have been out of place in Los Angeles. But in Santa Barbara, oh, that's not good. They, they, they had horses. They had swimming pools. They had all of this. They had convertible Mercedes. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, it's a review. If, if you want to see the destruction of a, you want to see the destruction of broadcast Television. You want to see the introduction of. Um, well, of, this is of, about his, This is about history. It is history, and it is really, it, and like I said, you this the characters fit seamlessly. All you got to do is look at the beginning of the movie, which sets it all up, where the characters are are going flittering well, back and forth. You and see the evolution. Yeah. Of the characters. Yeah. As, as as you see the effects of having the cameras on them all the time. I mean, think about you. It's like, in your life, how would you like it if a camera was with you all the time? Yeah. So they, you know, so it, it but today it is, I mean, I got, we got the cameras with us all the time too, so, I mean, I shy people on when I'm on camera because I'm an introverted extrovert, which means I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a moderate liberal, I'm a conservative liberal, all of these things. But I don't, I don't tend to talk to people. I mean, we absolutely, she'll tell you, she's got, we went to events and they think, doesn't he like me? He said, no, he just doesn't give a damn. <laughs> they don't yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. I go, I go the same way as when I was doing this stuff when I was younger. I go because it was something I was supposed to do. I didn't want to go, but I did it. Mm -hmm. I stopped appearing on camera a decade ago. I'm back on again. But, um, I do, when I'm on camera, which is not as a whole lot, no matter what people may think, what happens is, is we're on, the one guy said we're on 11 different sites, I didn't realize that. We are? Yeah, somebody said we're on 11 different sites. Um, I'm only on some of them. Some of them. I'm not on the other. She is, you know. Um, so what happens is, if you look at the old cam, or you look at news video web, you tend to see me a lot. But if you look at the others, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe a voice in the background or have nothing. She does, uh, you know, her stuff. I'm nowhere near her stuff because I don't do it. I mean, I, I have. You know, generally I don't because the reasons are because I've worked. I, it, You're it, working. I, I'm working. I'm, I'm, I do the directing stuff, but I also do the editing. Like I said, I will change things that she's done. I'll re-edit it totally. So I will change the nature of what was done if I get my hands on some stuff. So right now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm screwing with some stuff right now, which probably shouldn't be good. Um, but I can understand what you can do, what an editor can be vicious, totally. Well, I mean, I can always understand, um, for, for example, if, if I look at a photo, I can often tell, unless it's just a straight photo line, I can tell sometimes if the photographer likes actor or actress. Yeah. Can't oh, I, you? I always knew. I mean, I could you tell. Can... I, mean, I, was, I was doing some stuff on the Virginian, and the director photographer's wife would do guest episodes, and it basically he loved his wife. Mm 
I also work with Sid Charisse. Sid Charisse, I hate Amra. The cinematographers love Sid Charisse. But you can you can tell. Yeah, because they'll do everything differently. And also with the interviews, when I've asked people, you know, they're going to do an interview, there's people that I've interviewed before and they're like, oh, they love me, let's go do another one, right? Yeah. And then there's other people who I haven't met before and they're like, well, um, what kind of questions are you going to ask? Or what? Yeah. And you can tell that they have been stung before. Oh, yeah. We, we, we so, but uh, it's just this um, got you filmmaking started in this thing. Mm -hmm. And this is just a history of gotcha filmmaking and destruction. It's, it's, it basically is like Phoenix Rising. They got everything they wanted in the end. Mm -hmm. Everything. Totally. I mean, they got what you they, they just didn't realize all the stuff they'd have to go through. No, because they were very, like you point out, that she uh, was. That, that's what uh, Diane Lane said. The woman was. If she was, if she was had the same thing to do today, she would know better. But because they were the first, it shouldn't have been done. This should never have been approved by, I do remember, they wanted to know who the hell at public broadcasting approved the expenditure for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking left and the right. They did not like this. Because it gave the uh, it, it gave the battle cry to the people on the right to shut down public broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And so for 40 years, they've been fighting because this show set the... the Which <laughs> 